Hi, welcome to a, another video about packing away my Commodore 64 games into a much safer location, allowing me to fill up the space on the wall behind me. As you can see, a few gaps are beginning to appear now as we progress. Uh, we've looked at Hit Squad, we've looked at Kicks, we've looked at uh, Elite On Call, we've looked in the last video at Codemasters, and now we've arrived at probably, um, and I'm quite surprised by how many of these I've actually got, um, one of the perennial budget uh, software makers of the era, and that is Mastertronic. And I've got a heck of a lot of games here, which I didn't honestly think I had as many as I did. I thought the Hit Squad one was, was quite big. I thought Codemasters was quite big, 30-odd each at least. There's probably double the amount of games here on that one. I'm going to fly through these as quickly as I can. Um, some of them I know a bit about. Some of them I don't know anything about at all. Um, it also covers all the names uh, that Mastertronic used. So there was obviously the Mastertronic label. There was MAD, which was uh, a variant of that. There was the Tronics label. Uh, other ones as well which I've picked up. Anything that's got a Mastertronic name on it, I'm going to show you in this video. Um, be as quick as I can, but there's an awful lot of them. <laughs> I'll try and see where we go. Um, I'll start with this lot first because this is what most people will remember about Mastertronic and the fact that um, the, the cases were slightly different, um, different colours, but also the fact that if you can see here on this one, um, the design label initially was quite. Um, unique and stupid light uh, different from there so we'll go with these and see how we get on um, like I said, I've got no idea what some of these games are about but we'll, um, we'll see we go so we got uh, video minis and then this is kickstart which I have played um, and it's, it's, it's an off uh, road simulator it's a side on um, bike game where uh, it's quite difficult to control actually because it's very easy to sort of fall off. It's like uh, you remember the old TV kid program Kickstart, it's that sort of variant on that. Sold by the bucket load, very well known um, 8 bit game. That one, uh, this one here is Ball Crazy, which I don't really know what that is. And there are some screenshots on that one. Couldn't really bounce. Eric the ball around the screen, change the colour of the blocks, pick up bonus objects, fight off the chasers, and try to amass as large a score as possible. Ah, oh, okay, that seems fairly self explanatory, doesn't it, really? Fairly self explanatory. Um, the Curse of Sherwood. Yeah, that's probably something to do with Robin Hood. So he called it Sherwood. Did you remember in the Code Masters video I mentioned about Super Robin Hood? Let's call that one Sherwood. Uh, yeah, this one is. Uh, Vegas Jackpot, which is a gambler. <laughs> nice, easy for one to remember. Zzz, as in sleep. You see the, the distinctive design label on it. People would automatically recognise it. Uh, the Captive. You don't get box art like this anymore, do you? This is very, very interesting. Uh, very unique style, um, very of the era. Uh, this is uh, Spooks. Uh, nineteen eighty-five, the day after. The day after what? Nineteen eighty. First of October. There are um, just sort of showing you on the inside. There are actually on the inlay card. Um, sort of graphic shots rather than being on the back of the box the way these boxes were designed so you can actually you'd have to open it up to see what the graphics were like I mean nine times out of ten you would buy a game because of what it looked like on the back of the box not whether it was playable uh, this is Chiller it's sort of meant to be sort of maybe a, a Michael Jackson variant on the front I don't know uh, again don't know an awful lot about that one. There isn't even a graphic on the back of that one on the inside, so I don't know. Uh, this is Squirm. Energy Warrior. This also comes, uh, it's a two part of this one, that's on one side, on the other side you've got a game called Molecule Man, so two games for the price of one there. SOS Excalibur uh, 
have to play some of these to see what they're like. I can't even pronounce this one. I'll just show you what it's called. You better work it out for yourself. If I can, come on, there we go. Non Terra Chaos. That's the front of it. Which doesn't tell you anything about what it's about. Got no idea. It's a robot, bro, no, ship, robot exploding type thing. Uh, Hollywood or bust. Kobayashi Naru. I thought that was something out of Star Trek. No, I don't know. Looks like it's a spaceship type thing anyway. So those are all those distinctive cases, and then you know, literally a great pile of games here, which again I just try and pop through as a, best I can. Uh, 3D pinball. Just turn that around there. Uh, One eighty darts, which is quite a common game. This one's quite a lot of these knocking around. Um, not the greatest darts game in the world. I've got to be honest with you. I played a, uh, a PDC uh, World Darts, which is not exactly fantastic, but it's it's a bit more playable than that. Amarot, Amarot, Amarote. I I don't know. Again, uh, looks like a top-down adventure game. Alone in a city infested with killer insects. Well, there you go. That's different, isn't it? That's different. Uh, Alcazar, which is explore castles, combat demons, and collect the tools needed to secure the throne of Alcazar. The good news is it's joystick controlled. So, because of the age of the game, they were taught, you know, you use keys. Um, so actually, having a game which is a uh, you know, joystick thing was quite novel, probably, at times. Here's a classic for you know we talk classic games we're talking um, manic miner and as you can see there's a sticker on the front of the box which has got a zap silver medal award uh, one of the all-time classics if you don't know anything about manic miner then look it up on the internet not to make tell you what it is but yeah classic game uh, hacker two the doomsday papers which. You can see I'm struggling to tell you anything about any of these games because I must admit I don't know many of them at all. Bit of ropey copy of Magic Carpet. What have we got here? Erebus. So look at that front cover, I'm, I'm intrigued already. Uh, our sworn enemies, the Hadians, are attempting to obliterate Earth using a, noil, a vile noxious gas. There we go. Now, this one's on the Tronics label. This is a re budget re-release of Golden Axe. Now, if you know anything about arcade games, you know that Golden Axe was one of the uh, biggest games with huge graphics of uh, sort of warriors and uh, dragons and uh, minions, and you were going left to right and uh, uh, sort of cutting them up, get through and battle to the end using potions and uh, riding on the backs of, of, of very very strange sort of creatures. Fantastic game, multiplayer. Uh, you got two players playing at once, and it was brilliant. I didn't play this game as much as I played the Amiga version, but you need to play Golden Axe if you've never played it. Whatever, you know, you need to play Golden Axe. Simple as that. Uh, this is Rockford. Now there is a similar type game to this one uh, called Boulder Dash, which you, you may have heard of. Uh, it's basically a, a maze. Uh, type puzzle game very well regarded very well renewed this is quest for the golden egg cup I have absolutely no idea what that is about but it looks to me like it's possibly a text adventure in the text adventures I know I end up, I bought a job lot of, of games years and years ago um, and, and obviously this is what I've ended up with uh, I had no idea there were so many Mastertronic games. Pulsoids. Hoping some of this is, is people going, oh yeah, I remember that. Or 
I'd never played that one before or I didn't realise that exists. That looks like it's a breakout Arkanoid type thing. Uh, where you're sort of like trying to uh, eliminate all the bricks off the screen. Well, this is politically correct. Legend of the Amazon Women. Now, I'm probably guaranteed that sold a few copies. Uh, the writing is, is incredibly small on this. Stranded in the middle of the jungle after a terrible plane crash, your child has been stolen by a tribe of Amazon warriors who want to raise her as one of their own. You must fight your way through the jungle past Amazons armed with clubs, swords and axes, avoiding the many arrows in order to rescue your daughter. Doesn't look particularly good. It's hard to think that was acceptable back then. Uh, roll around. This looks like it's uh, a Spin Dizzy uh, Marble Madness crossover. If you remember Spin Dizzy, uh, you had to move like a. I don't know, it was like a triangle shaped. Uh, object, uh, strongly for the object around the screen, an isometric version, mold man to roll a, a marble all the way down a maze. Looks like it's pretty much a similar sort of thing, but uh, yeah, never heard of that one before. This is Night Games, which looks like it's based on medieval combat. Always going to have a bit of medieval combat. Uh, a glorious feast of medieval combat. Can I have a glorious feast? I've never heard any music, you know. Should we go and watch some medieval combat today? Yes, it should be a glorious feast. Sword fighting, crossbow, quarter staff, ball and chain, archery, pike staff, and axe man. Well, there we go. Now, fifth quadrant. Um, this looks like it's a re release because I noticed that it's got the Ricochet label on it, which I think is probably uh, a, a Mastertronic sort of re release budget label. There's a, a very sort of iconic scene at the start of the game where there's like a, a dead body on the floor and someone's written murder in blood across the the, uh, the wall at the back. Um, yeah, so that, that's quite a, a well known, a well thought out game. Uh, now, show you a game in the code master video called, called Art Guardian Angel. This is called Street Hassle. Oh, it's got a picture of a. Has he got a gorilla on the back of his. Wearing golden battle shorts and armed with naked fists. It's a long night at the office, this one. You control our hero's personal vendetta to clean up the streets of gorillas, possibly. I, I have no idea. It was a gorilla escape from the zoo or something. Ugh, dear. And there's no originality in games nowadays, but. Uh, this is Motos or Motos. Don't know. Ah. Tells you all you need to know about this game. Defend the solar ba solar base against the mess mast hordes of space bees. There we go. I've always said space space bees have always had a very, very rough time of it. Um, I'm going to keep going through these really, really quickly. Street Beat. Now, this, again, uh, quite a novel game in the fact that it, it's a sort of rhythm-based. an old uh, price label on the back, which you probably can't see there. Um, I've read a lot about it. I've read a bit about it. I don't know an awful lot about it. The, the writing on the back is purely um, there for decoration because no one in their right mind is going to be able to read that. Um, like the cover on this one, Night Time. Forward into the night. That looks really good, doesn't it? That's proper artwork that is and then as you can see on the back of this the third in the series of an adventure featuring magic knight uh, sorry i know this is quite a well-known game but I, i'm afraid i've never played it so i can't really comment on that one treasure island gear probably pirate fans out there who aren't getting enough um pirate action uh, looks like it's a, an adventure um, type game with text and things Fascinating. Uh, Dan Dare 2. Now, uh, people again of a certain generation will have no idea what Dan Dare is. Uh, he was a 50s uh, comic book invention here in the UK. And uh, in the Eagle magazine, if my memory serves me correctly, ran for a number of years before it was eventually phased out as being a bit of old hat, really. Because, you know, Dan Dare 
um, compared to things like Superman and Batman and Spider-Man when it's sort all of kind of my generation was sort of a bit not quite this is Dan Dare 2 Mekon's Revenge um, and they actually the Dan Dare games did get very well reviewed and were quite well lauded at the time I think there's three of them all together um, so I've got that one there Oh, I love the cover. I, I don't know. I love the cover to this one. This is um, Hero of the Golden Talisman, and it just because reminds me of the old TV program Tales of the Golden Monkey, which you may or may not remember. Uh, if not, look it up because that's what the intent is for. Sometimes, um, an all-action, large-scale adventure in which you will need every ounce of skill and courage to destroy the forces of evil, traverse the labyrinth, defy fireball breathing dragons, and release the city from its curse by reuniting the five pieces of the golden talisman doesn't quite sound like the same sort of thing um, but there we go but again look at the graphics look at the graphical art on that absolutely cracking stuff beautiful that it is a work of art now beat it is also I think I'm going to go street beat and beat I don't know that's a similar sort of game to, to street beat and if you look at the back here uh, there's a rhythm game now if I just sort of try and Rockin Rodney has made significant strides in his crucial career. This time, uh, he has been sent to collect notes for new noises for the. Oh yeah, I don't know. But <laughs> I'm not reading that. Great stuff on that one. Um, countdown to meltdown. I'm not sure what that is, but. Maybe something to do with nuclear war. Don't forget it was the eighties. Uh, Crystal Raider. What well, pissed me, Matt Berry on the front. Ah, Italia ninety. Now these are the uh, it's again on the Tronics label, which was uh, a variant re-release. Um, yeah, the graphics on the back are not the Commodore sixty four ones. I don't remember, I played a number of Italy 90 games. I don't think I played this one. I think I played the US Gold official Italy 91. I think I played Kickoff 2s. I think I never played, no, I played Kickoff 2s. Um, World Cup 90 add on. There's also a Codemasters game called Italia 90, which is actually terrible. Uh, I never played that one. So I, I don't know. Uh, Bomb Fusion. Again. Don't know much about that one, I'm afraid. Ah, the last V8. I can tell you um, that uh, the music was done for this by voice. Was it Ron? Oh, Rob Hubbard. Rob Hubbard, wasn't it? Yeah, did the music for Commander. Uh, and this game was also notoriously difficult to control. Um, didn't. Uh, Music was meant to be fantastic. I never played it, but again, it's got all that lovely artwork, hasn't it? Lovely artwork. Uh, mentioned Dan Dare earlier. This is the first game, Dan Dare Pilot of the Future. I don't have the third one. There were three altogether that were released. They all got a very good review. Uh, this is a re -release, budget re release. This is Silkworm. Now, uh, when this was released, it was a conversion of an arcade game uh, which generally didn't sort of set any. Um, records on records in the arcade, but the conversion to home system was a pretty good one. Uh, got very very good reviews, and the follow-up Swiv, uh, which was an original game, was was even better. I remember playing Silkworm quite a bit because you had a, a plane, and then you could do play and have a jeep across a box, so you could both play at the same time, which was which was quite different. Uh, this is Psycho Hopper, not a game about Dennis. Um, but it looks like it's to do with the 70s craze of space hoppering. You can see from the front there. Oh uh, yeah, another Super Nudge 2000. Why on earth people thought these would be good to put on there? Because you don't actually win any money out of it. And if you own the best fruit sim machine simulator I've ever played, Spoken by none other than Julian Rignall of CMVG at the time, because he used to be in, in Zap, didn't he? Yeah, yeah I, 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 I've never seen the appeal in those. You don't win any money out of them. Oh, look, it's the last V8. Again. But not the same copy. I have two copies of this. If you want a copy of the last V8, let me know. I have one going spare. And I do have quite a few uh, Commodore games going spare, which I may 
mention if people want to uh, get in touch and I could probably send you the, the free copy if you like that uh, this is Rogue another loincloth and sword type game can't see anything on the back of that one so I'm not going to show you uh, Micro Mouse looks like it's a maze game it is a maze game Uh, hole in one this is a you know, golf simulator it's not a very good one I've got to be honest with you uh, compared to I think leaderboard was around at the same time we mentioned leaderboard in the kicks video uh, yeah this is uh, not great uh, cane two now there is a cane one um, and it's a cowboy uh, type simulator cowboy simulator cowboy simulator it's based around the old west it's actually not bad, it's quite good fun. They sold, I remember it sold a huge amount of copies at the time. Uh, this is Toy Bizarre, which says guide Merton the maintenance man through a night at the Gizmo Automated Toy Works, but watch out the toys are in revolt. And again, it looks like it's a platform game. Werewolves of London. Ah, there's a famous song about that. Run rampage across the rooftops, get savage in the sewers, have a hairy fit in Hyde Park, spread terror in the tube stations. There's a famous song about werewolves in London, wasn't there? Werewolves of London. I expect the American werewolf in London film. Not sure whether that's related. I don't think it probably is. Uh, Past Finder, which was a Zap Sizzler back in the day. Most underrated game of the year, Zap 64. There we go. One of the most highly acclaimed shoot 'em ups available now at a budget price. So that tells you something it's been released. That was on a mad label, Massatronic Added Dimension. Which I said there's different variants of. Uh... Ah, now here's something for which is all rather interesting. Droids, Star Wars droids. Remember the, the short lived cartoon series with uh, Anthony Daniels voicing C3PO? No, nope, neither do I. Some people do. Um, and as you can see, it's uh, Star Wars related. I'm pretty sure Mr. Lucas got his slice of the pie at the time. Uh, based on a cartoon series, of course. Uh, never played it. Never seen the cartoon series either. Uh, Pulse Warrior. Good news is we get to the very much the, the tail end of these. Uh, Camelot Warriors. That's got something to do with knights in shining armor, I expect. Uh, now you're about to begin a journey of no return. I think I understood that when I started doing this. Uh, sweep. Uh, not a sooty spin-off. Uh, this is about ch hungry rats and raging fires will block your way as you battle in the dark to sweep all the chimneys. And win a bonus game. Chimney sweep simulator. That's, uh, that's the sort of game. If I if I was buying that game at the time, that I would have gone, yeah, I'd have bought that. Um license game, Action Force. Uh known also on the other side of the pond as G.I. Joe. And uh I remember that at the time, but I never actually played it. Like, I never got into Action Force when I was a kid, it just didn't seem uh what I wanted to be doing. I wasn't really a fan of sort of like toys and the, like the action figures and things. I had a He-Man and a couple of He-Man figures. I had BA of the A-Team as we got another tangent. Uh, Secret Wars figures. Remember Secret Wars? That was very, very short-lived. Marvel Secret Wars. I had Captain America, I think. Yeah, but I never got into action force. Anyway, back from the tangent. This is Octoplex. Okay, it looks like a maze game. I think I say I, I, it looks like I don't know I never played it uh, Venom again this is, looks like it's a, a role playing text adventure I think now I just type things like go left go right move and then I'm sort of within five minutes I get really really sort of fed up with it uh, Jet Set Willy The Final Frontier there we go another absolute classic Enough been written and said about Jet Set Willy over the past 20, 30 years or so that doesn't need me to bring into it. But you can guarantee when you start talking about old games like Spectrum games, someone say, oh yeah, Jet Set Willy, guarantee it. 
That'll be one of the five they bring up. Uh, Bazooka Bill. Some stunningly silly names of these games, aren't they? And the last one, and there we go, is Rock and Bolt, which you could probably sort of call it Professional Construction Simulator. You've presented your bid, dazzled the boring board and clinched the big contract. It's an amazing 100-story puzzle of blueprints, bolts and beams. It'll take all the high energy and high stepping. You've got to make it to the top. Uh -huh. Hard hats not included. So, that's a lot of Mastertronic games, isn't it? I didn't think there would be as many of that. But yeah, now, as you can see over the uh, shoulder here, this one here, yeah, there's a big pile there. That's the next video. And um, if we go through all those and then what you can see below that is a load of cover tapes which I'm not going to go through uh, because I've not included them in, in this little section but we're going to go through that, that bit up there next that's the next one to go through and we'll bring you all those and you can see it's quite a lot there isn't there quite a lot but it's a real mixture of stuff there's some um, real strange things in there anyway hope you've enjoyed it I hope you're still awake because that's the most important thing about this if you're staying awake and you know perhaps we watch the first couple and not really realize how long they are these videos should come with a warning make a sandwich and go to the toilet and have a drink first before you do anyway thanks for watching we'll carry on with uh, another video next time hope you've enjoyed those like i said um mastertronic massive label at the time for the commodore 64 and other formats as well i didn't really realize quite how many there were there's an awful lot of games but an awful lot of uh, good software in there um, and an awful lot I don't know about so perhaps we might need to re-educate myself on Mastertronic. Anyway, thanks for watching, we'll see you again very soon. Take care.